Looks like we are approaching 701 and we have a number of attendees uh, already signed on. So why don't we get started? Good evening and welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Raymond Gonzalez, the proud superintendent of schools. Tonight as part of our goal to enhance community engagement and to provide you with more information about what's going on in our district, we're pleased to host the first in our Westfield Public Schools Spotlight on Education webinar series. Given the recent events locally and globally, it is important that the first webinar in this series focuses on Holocaust education in the Westfield Public School District, and we thank all of you who have joined us tonight. As you will hear in tonight's presentation, the district's long-standing commitment to educating our students about the Holocaust and genocide goes beyond the state mandated curriculum. Joining me tonight is Dr. Paul Panero, Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction, Mrs. Marianne McGann, Community Engagement Coordinator, and Ms. Andrea Brennan, Supervisor of K-12 Social Studies. Ms. Brennan will be our presenter this evening who will share with you a look back at Holocaust education in our schools, as well as looking forward as we seek to improve upon that educational experience for our students. So at this time, I will hand the presentation over to Mrs. Brennan. Thank you very much, Dr. Gonzalez, and welcome everybody. I'm really pleased to spend some time with you this evening. I know time is precious and it's so important that you um, chose to spend some time with us tonight. So. What I'd like to first share with you is um, my presentation doesn't seem to be advancing. So hold on for one moment. Let me see if I can restart my slideshow and I will get us off and started. One moment, please. Okay, there we are, and now we should be ready. Okay, so here are our goals for this evening. So first I'd like to set some historical context for everybody in the audience, just in terms of the Holocaust mandate in the state of New Jersey that Dr. Gonzalez mentioned, how Westfield Public Schools has been meeting that mandate um, throughout the K-12 program, not just in social studies, but in other content areas and also our current and future plans to really continue to focus on Holocaust and genocide studies, and how we're addressing the needs of the community um, and listening and learning from our students and, and hearing what they are telling us that they need in this area. And then also some time to answer some of your questions and thanks to those of you that pre-submitted some questions that really helped inform um, some of the things that I'm highlighting tonight. So those are our goals for tonight. So on this slide, you'll see the Holocaust and Genocide Law that was passed in 1994 by Governor Whitman. And really it applies to all New Jersey public schools in their K-12 programs. And the law states that programs should be multidisciplinary. And it, it really uh, provides guidance for public schools to use the New Jersey Student Learning Standards um, in all content areas as a framework for how to develop a program of Holocaust and genocide studies and education for the students in their districts. What you'll see on this slide are some key topics and concepts that um, the law requires our educational programs to include. So these are things like remembering the victims of genocide and Holocaust um, with the primary goal of reducing bias, bullying, and prejudice in our schools, um, building the capacity for students to understand that prejudice and discrimination may lead to genocide. So those are the key focus areas in, in the mandate and in the law for New Jersey. So here's some history in terms of the work that Westfield um, has started to do once, once this mandate was passed and even prior to that. So in 1990, Westfield began our partnership with Kane University. We joined what was then called the Diversity Council. We were a founding member of the Diversity Council in 1990. Now it's currently called the Diversity Council on Global Education and Citizenship. 
as a member district in good standing, um, we have access to a lot of resources, professional development workshops for teachers, classroom resources, tuition-free graduate courses, uh, as well as access to Kane University's Holocaust Resource Center. Uh, in 1991, there were 14 member districts across the state of New Jersey, and um, this year there are over 70 member districts. So it's really grown in strength in numbers across the state of New Jersey. In 1990, 91, that school year was the first year Westfield High School hosted the post, um, the post baccalaureate graduate courses. So these are two semester courses that are open to our teachers in the district free of free of charge. And the semester one course is called teaching the Holocaust. And then the semester two course is called teaching Pre prejudice reduction. And this school year was also the first year that um, Kane University added a field experience for the teachers enrolled in that second semester course to travel to Washington DC to visit and learn um, more at the Holocaust Memorial Museum. And it's really um, you know, quite an experience for the teachers. Over the past five years, um, Kane University shared with me that we've had uh, 32 Westfield teachers participate in this post-baccalaureate post program, and we're really quite proud of that. Um, this year, the post-baccalaureate program is offered at Kane's Union County campus, at their Ocean County campus, as well as at Brick High School and Hillsborough High School. And we have put our name in the hat to be a host for next school year, and we hope that we're selected. Um, what Kane does is they take a look at all the member districts across the state, and they try to locate these courses in regions that will be most accessible for the teachers that have enrolled. So that's a little historical context on our partnership with Kane. In terms of Westfield's development of the Holocaust and Genocide course of study, that's what really came next. Um, Westfield's uh, course of study is revised and reviewed every five years. So it's an ongoing process. It's informed by the New Jersey Student Learning Standards. So it's a multidisciplinary um, approach to Holocaust and genocide studies. It is definitely shaped by age appropriateness. Um, you know, we take into account, or it was taken into account when we revised it and developed it, you know, what concepts should be introduced and taught at the elementary, middle, and high school level. Um, the course of study really is a framework to see where the learning goals for Holocaust and genocide education are explored at each grade level and in which content area. So the key learning goals you'll see for the Westfield's course of study are, are up on this screen. You know, for students by the end of grade 12 to really understand that genocide is a consequence of prejudice and discrimination. That students understand, you know, the issues surrounding moral dilemmas and how they impact people's lives. And that students recognize that they have a personal responsibility to fight racism and hatred. So a few words about age appropriateness. I spoke about this, and um, this is really important when we're talking about genocide and Holocaust studies. So when, um, when the educators first came together to create the program of studies, um, they consulted the experts at the US, US Holocaust Memorial Museum in DC, as well as the New Jersey Student Learning Standards. So as you can see here on this slide, that in the K-5 area, um, individual stories and building empathy and understanding what prejudice and discrimination are and how it can harm people is, is really the goal and that's age appropriate. Starting in grade six, that's when students can start to grapple with the complexities of the history of, of the Holocaust and the scope and scale of those events. The New Jersey Student Learning Standards and Social Studies introduces European history and geography starting in sixth grade. And those, those are grade spans six through eight. And also the World War II time period is introduced in grades nine through 12 in terms of the social studies standards. And I'll speak a little bit more about specifically what happens 
within our curriculum and social studies and how it aligns to the learning goals in the course of study for Holocaust and genocide. So that brings me to this slide here. How are we meeting the mandate in Westfield? So it was very tough coming up with what to highlight because there are a lot of great things going on. Tonight, I'm gonna to highlight some examples, not an exhaustive list, but some examples from social studies and English classes. But what you will see when you take a look at the Holocaust and genocide course of study is those multidisciplinary connections that these these topics are not only covered in social studies and English language arts, but they were also discussed during um, health and guidance lessons in the world languages, as well as the visual and performing arts. Okay, so let's take a look at K-5. Um, you know, what does this look like in the classroom and what, what are the areas of focus? Because that was a key question that, that I saw emerging time and again. So the learning goal that I'd like to highlight here that spans the K-5 um, area is um, the idea of understanding how to recognize similarities and differences and appreciating that differences enrich us. The theme here really is combating the development of bias and prejudice. So this, this topic runs throughout the K-5 uh, grade span. An example of how we can see this in our curriculum is in the social studies um, area. In grades K through three, we have what are called diversity units that are built into the school year. Um, and what happens here is the students learn about what cultural universals are, what is our shared humanity. They understand that all cultures share common um, traits, family, education, language, holidays, traditions, the economy, um, and geography. So, in these grade levels, we take a look at these regions or areas of the world and we explore our shared humanity. So let me give a little more specific example from a third grade classroom. So in the social studies area, students are exploring this essential question, what do American holidays and symbols signify? Um, in this unit, students read and learn about holidays around the world. Um, holidays like Christmas, Diwali, St. Lucia's Day, and Hanukkah. They create a holidays around the world booklet, and they take a look at what are the commonalities between these holidays and, and what those tr family traditions actually are. A culminating activity, frequently we have parent visits, um, and lately we've had parents visit and read aloud a book about Diwali and share with the class how their Westfield family celebrates this holiday. Students then compared Diwali tra tra traditions to the traditions of other holidays that they learned about, like, like Hanukkah for the one lesson that I actually observed. In English language arts, this is reinforced through a number of read alouds. This one I chose to um, spotlight tonight a book called I Am Human, and it really focuses in on the concept of building empathy. In second grade classroom, in language arts, staying with the theme of combating bias and prejudice, students um, are exposed to a book called All Are Welcome. And this book follows a group of children through a day in their, in their school where all kids are welcome. So kids that are wearing baseball, pat, baseball hats, hijabs, or yarmulkes are playing side by side. And at the end of the book, the whole community comes together to celebrate the Lunar New Year. On the social studies side, we dig a little bit deeper in second grade. In unit four of our social studies curriculum, we focus on making changes and learning from others. And the learning goal that this aligns with in the Holocaust course of study is identifying the sources and consequences of prejudice and give examples of how prejudice can be seen in history, either the impact on individuals or groups. So in this area of the social studies curriculum, you'll see the essential question here, what obstacles have people faced in improving their, their communities and how did they deal with these challenges? And this is tackled um, in the classroom through biographies and uh, group presentations. So students take a look at uh, the life of Martin Luther King Jr. as, as kind of an example. 
they learn about how he experienced discrimination and unfairness and the steps that he took to try to solve the unequal treatment for African Americans in our country. Students then worked in groups to read additional biographies and create presentations where they identified unfair treatment and the steps their person took to solve that problem and improve their community. So here we see a third grade classroom example, again from the social studies. In unit two and third grade, we focus on immigration. Here students learn about the immigrant experience from Ellis Island and Angel Island during the, you know, the turn of the last century. They learn and understand that immigrants faced many challenges, both leaving their, their home countries and coming to this country. But they also learn that the immigrants shaped the culture and the economy of the United States. And it was instrumental in the growth of our country. Finally, students really start to understand perspective here that when we retell the past, there are many different stories of immigration and students have the opportunity to use primary sources, including firsthand accounts from children that came through Ellis Island. They have the opportunity to research their own family heritage. Um, and there are also many virtual field trips that take place during this unit. So this is really also focusing on that learning goal of recognizing our commonalities and differences, appreciating those differences so that we're combating the development of bias and prejudice. In fourth grade, in social studies, students are really digging a lot deeper and many of the topics that they are looking at are from the, the three worlds meet time period, the early exploration and the settlement of our country, the Revolutionary War. Um, and here students are really looking at the sources and consequences of prejudice, really reaffirming and reinforcing the importance of empathy and respect because the history that they're studying in fourth grade is, is difficult. Um, so I'll give an example from the classroom during unit one, which is early in the school year, during the 14 and 1500s, where we have three worlds meeting and students are exploring this essential question. Why do people from diverse cultures sometimes experience conflict? As they study about the mystery of Roanoke, they're listening to or reading um, accounts from the native perspective, accounts from the European explorer perspective, and coming to understand that different motives, beliefs, and fears created conflict over land and resources in the new world. So the theme of empathy and respecting differences is certainly a learning goal here during this unit. In the fifth grade, many of you are aware of the historical fiction unit that students explore. And on this slide, you'll see where this historical fiction unit in ELA um, really aligns very well with the Holocaust course of study learning goal. So understanding how prejudice and discrimination may lead to genocide, discussing what is meant by the Holocaust and recognizing how and why people acted. And here, I think ex extreme care is taken by the teachers to um, have these conversations in an age appropriate way. Um, so as they explore the mentor text, which is number the stars, students are learning about the historical context. Um, and they're also doing additional outside research. And um, we also host a number of culminating events at the end of this unit. Um, one of the things that I'll just share, if, if you don't know, is that Number of the Stars is set in Denmark in 1943. And themes that run throughout this book really are kind of, you know, victims, rescuers, the resistance, you know, acts of hate against Jews, and really understanding how and why people acted during that time period. So I'll provide a few more examples. So in the fifth grade, as students are going through the mentor text, they're also um, experiencing read alouds and, and book clubs in the classroom. These provide additional perspectives that align with the learning goal from the Holocaust and genocide course of study. Um, one of the things that I'll just highlight here is uh, Whispering Town is a picture book 
but it is based on an actual Danish fishing village. And it focuses really in on how the community pulled together to resist Nazi occupation of Denmark during this time period and how the community helped save the Jewish members of their community. Um, so it is, it is quite a meaningful and powerful book for, for fifth graders to be exposed to. On the social studies side in fifth grade, a classroom example of historical context is using documentary and interviews. And many people asked about um, using survivor testimony and second and third generation survivors. And this is a wonderful example of bringing that into the classroom. This, this fifth grade um, group of students took a look at this documentary from HBO called The Number on My Great Grandfather's Arm. And it focuses in on one uh, young boy's interview and conversations with his great grandfather who was a survivor of Auschwitz. The themes that are highlighted here as students go through and, and view the documentary and answer some reflective questions are, you know, what are the symbols that were used? The yellow star and the swastika are, are, are discussed. Acts of hate against Jews are also discussed as, uh, you know, like an introduction to the concept of anti-Semitism. Another example of a project in fifth grade is a pop-out historical fiction project. So one of the things that students are learning in this unit is how important setting is to the genre, that the setting really drives the story. So students are encouraged as they're reading the mentor text, Number of the Stars, to stop and locate, it, locate the places on the map where the story is taking place. Um, they're encouraged to do additional research about the time period of the story. And then in this particular example, students are reading outside sources, outside historical fiction texts, and then basically creating the same information and, and posting it um, as a project for, for the students. So here, um, the additional books that were explored were Terrible Things and Erica's Story, as well as the book Thief. Another um, project that was done in the fifth grade is this Butterfly Poetry Project. Um, here, fifth grade students wrote poems that were inspired by their reading of The Butterfly by Pavel Friedman. Students learned that butterflies are the symbol of hope and freedom. And in creating these poetic butterflies, students honored the victims of the Holocaust and shared the importance of tolerance and kindness. And these are some examples of some culminating activities that took place this year and that are planned for future years. Um, I spoke about Whispering Town, so the author, Jennifer Elvgren, did visit um, our schools in February and March. One of the things that was wonderful about this visit is that students not only learned the historical context of Whispering Town, um, but Jennifer also spoke about the research she put in to research this book, learning about the history of the Holocaust in Denmark. And she also spoke about the writing and publishing process, which was really interesting. And she also spoke about how she had to collaborate with her illustrator that she actually never met. So students had a lot of questions about that. It generated some very good conversation and it was really a nice alignment between the writing process as well as the learning process and learning about the history of the Holocaust. We've always had a lot of survivor visits come to, to Westfield to the fifth grade students. Um, and this year we had a visit in February and we are having another planned one this spring. Dramatic performances have also been a consistent ongoing culminating activity. And I have to really thank the parent teacher organizations that have helped fund these performances and Living Voices Through the Eyes of a Friend is scheduled for this May. And if you're not familiar, this program is a dramatic retelling of Anne Frank's life through the eyes of her best friend, both before and after um, 
the Holocaust and her hiding. So those are some examples of culminating activities in the fifth grade. So what does this look like in the middle school? So this slide is highlighting some of the essential questions that frame the lessons in social studies in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Um, these essential questions really come directly from the learning goals of the Holocaust and genocide course of study. In sixth grade, students are studying the ancient world and where this aligns with Holocaust studies is in unit two, when they're learning about the development of civilizations in Egypt, they're learning about where these, where the Jewish civilizations develop northeast of Egypt. They learn how the Jewish population were exiled from this region, but how the religion flourished and still flourishes today. In grade seven, students are learning about European expansion and the new world. Um, they are exploring in unit two the medieval time period, and here is where they are introduced to the origins of anti-Judaism, um, the concept of anti-Semitism and how the Jewish population was treated in medieval Europe. In eighth grade, students are really focusing on early American history, but where this aligns with Holocaust and genocide studies is when we take a look at westward expansion and how indigenous cultures were treated and that many historians consider this treatment genocide or ethnocide. So these are the areas of connection in, in middle school social studies. Um, talk briefly just for a quick moment about English language arts connections in middle school. So in seventh grade, when students are learning about memoirs, they have the opportunity in literature circles to select titles that this one title that focuses on Holocaust themes. And in eighth grade, when students are studying social justice, they're learning about novels. And there are a number of titles that you see here on the slide that focus on the concept of the Holocaust. Here are some more examples from grades six through eight social studies. So this year during International Holocaust Remembrance Day, we had a number of, I won't even say one day um, lessons, I'll say multi-day lessons on the Holocaust. And I've tried to highlight some of the questions that were explored in these various classroom activities. So in sixth grade, we're really setting the historical context. And what I will say is that the sixth graders really remembered their experiences in fifth grade they shared a lot about what they knew about the Holocaust, but they were curious um, and ready to learn more. Um, they really explored this idea of the moral dilemma and how choices impacted others um, and, and trying to grapple with that. In seventh grade, the focus was on understanding this concept of anti-Semitism, not only how individuals responded, but, but how nations around the world responded to um, you know, some of the Jewish refugees that were either, you know, directly exiled from their countries or were, were looking to escape. In eighth grade, students took a look at primary sources. They took a look at um, Rena Spiegel's diary entries. They uh, considered how their lives were reflected in some of those diary entries, understanding that although we're separated by time and space and a lot of experiences, that there were a lot of shared experiences too in terms of being a teenager and growing up during that time period. Students were also challenged to try to answer the question, can history change? Meaning, you know, how can we avoid something like the Holocaust from happening again? How can we make the future better for, um, for our young people today? Additionally, there was a virtual visit from a Holocaust survivor this year that came um, and we were able to share that with students. So what does this look like at the high school level? So in social studies, um, like I, I mentioned, this time period um, from the 1930s to 1945 is really addressed in the social studies standards at the high school level. 
in ninth grade students are exposed to Holocaust and genocide studies um, in two required courses. And ninth grade students have the option to take either global perspectives, humanities, or exploring global studies. And in all three of these classes, students are exposed to what the Holocaust was from a, a world history perspective. An example of this is students really consider in 1906 to 1945 the question, how are scapegoats used to maintain and consolidate power? And students really explore the aftermath of World War I, the rise of fascism and totalitarianism, as well as you know, how Hitler and Nazi Germany were able to kind of come to power and, and the things that happened there. Students in ninth grade also explore later in the year what modern atrocities have happened. Um, and they consider the question, what actions can be taken today um, to make an impact on our future? And the 11th grade students are taking either US2, AP US history, or American studies. They're learning about the Holocaust through the lens of World War II from an American perspective. Um, the focus here really is on you know, human rights and evaluating exactly what happened, analyzing those conditions and understanding the aftermath of World War II. So for example, you know, students learn in US too or in the 11th grade year, the path to genocide many teachers use the pyramid of hate to teach that uh, they're learning exactly what happened during the holocaust in world war one including but not limited to anti-semitism the nuremberg laws kristallnacht the development of the ghettos the deportation as well as the concentration camps they look at post-world war ii in terms of the creation of the un the nuremberg trials as well as genocides that ha happened post World War II. And you can see some of those um, some of those historical and contemporary examples on the slide. Additionally, in addition to the ninth grade and eleventh grade required courses, we also offer an elective course called Comparative Religions. It's open to ninth through twelfth graders. And this course is really focusing on understanding diverse peoples, and cultures, um, students learn about the religions of the world. Um, guest speakers are brought in, and you'll you'll see that Rab Rabbi Prosnit was one of um, one of our guest speakers um, during this class. In language arts, English four students in their twelfth grade year, during their existentialism unit, they focus on um, the um, genre of memoir. In their literature circles, this is an example um, that one teacher has created. Um, he asks students to consider the question, how does time and place impact the literature that we read and the stories that are being told from Eastern and Southern Europe? And students have the choice of taking a look at night or, or mouse to kind of answer that big question. So although we, we, we are confident that we are, you know, teaching students what they need to know and what they should know in Holocaust and genocide studies, our work is really continuing and, and we do recognize this. So here's where I will thank the community again. Um, I think all of the points on this slide were informed by community feedback, the conversations and meetings I've had with students, um, input from teachers, as well as administrators. I think the themes that emerged from a lot of those meetings and conversations were that students connected with the history of the Holocaust through personal stories. That was that resonated. Um, students are desiring more information on this topic, more lessons. They, they are, they're hungry for more. The fifth grade experiences definitely stuck with the students, the high school students, um, the 12th grade class that I was with in December, they remembered those fifth grade experiences. Um, there's also a need to focus on anti-Semitism. I think the symbols of hate as well as how to combat hate. 
So those those will be the things that will will guide our our future conversations and our future initiatives. So the first piece that I'd like to focus on here is refining common experiences across buildings and grade levels, working with the principals, working with my my supervisory colleagues and the teachers to build uh, common experiences for students moving forward. Developing common lessons in middle school social studies. That's something that we are starting currently this year to identify how we can develop common lessons within our current sixth, seventh, and eighth grade program in the social studies. I'm excited to embark on creating an interdisciplinary mini unit for eighth grade students. So this will take place in social studies and language arts. And the idea here is that students would be learning um, the historical context of the Holocaust in January while they're also reading a text that aligns with those ideas. And students will also get the benefit of having an interdisciplinary experience right before they have to make their course selections for ninth grade. So they have an, a little bit of an idea of what a humanities-based experience might look like and if they would like that for themselves in ninth grade. So our plan is to bring a small group of teachers together this April to design and write that mini unit so we can implement it next January. We are exploring a ninth grade social studies capstone project for the global perspectives, humanities and exploring global studies students. One of the things that are, one of the projects that is under consideration is a project called History Unfolded. And this is sponsored by the US Holocaust Memorial Museum in DC. It really puts the students in the place of a historical researcher where they are working with newspaper archives to figure out how the Holocaust was covered and reported in their town and their community. Uh, if they find out something that is exceptional or extraordinary, the Holocaust Museum invites the students to submit those articles and they include them in their archives. Um, we will continue to share best practices for teaching the Holocaust in our 11th grade required course. And we are finally developing a elective course on Holocaust and genocide studies that will be open to 10 through 12th graders. The plan right now is to work on writing that course next year with the eye towards offering the course to students in the 23-24 um, school year. So the concept right now would be a half year semester elective course on Holocaust and genocide studies. So this slide is highlighting some school-wide activities and after school activities. So we have a very active Jewish culture and development club at the high school. They were instrumental in organizing and implementing the December school-wide discussion on anti-Semitism and hate. Um, this club is also helping to plan a school-wide assembly that I just learned after school today that this assembly is going to take place on April 20th. Um, and all 9th through 12th graders will um, experience the assembly. It will be a Holocaust survivor with um, opportunity for Q&A. Um, the Jewish Culture and Development Club is also planning a after-school event as a follow-up activity to that school-wide assembly. Um, and it really is gonna be focusing on how to respond to modern day anti-Semitism. The students of that club seem to really want to focus on that and build some capacity for students to be able to respond to hate where, where they see it. Um, and this event is kind of in collaboration with the Student Government Association, with No Place for Hate Committee, and other multicultural clubs that we have at the high school. Um, I mentioned the Holocaust and Genocide Study courses that we offer to teachers through Kane. These are some other ongoing professional development opportunities teachers have taken advantage of just this school year. So it is an ongoing process. Um, one of the things I'll highlight here, and I'm quite excited about, is that we have a cohort of special ed teachers and English teachers that are collaborating to write a grant 
on um, Holocaust and genocide studies, and this would really focus on teaching the memoir night. And um, this grant is sponsored by Facing History and ourselves, an organization that we've worked with for quite some time. So um, fingers crossed that we're successful on that grant application. I wanted to also, before we kind of wrap up tonight and, and move towards some questions, is to thank these organizations. These are organizations that helped, um, helped us plan, helped us connect with Holocaust survivors, second generation survivors, and have really been longstanding partners with us in our work. So the parent teacher organizations, our community faith leaders have served as guest speakers. Um, the Jewish Federation of Greater Metro West New Jersey has been a really helpful partner throughout the years, connecting us with Holocaust survivors to come to our fifth graders. Um, I mentioned, you know, Kane University and the Diversity Council quite a bit. The Museum of Jewish Heritage offers wonderful teaching resources and hopefully a destination for a field experience for our upcoming genocide and Holocaust elective course. And of course, the Holocaust Memorial Museum um, is a wealth of resources for our teachers as they plan and develop their lessons on these topics. So I just wanted to take a moment to reiterate some answers to some of the pre-submitted questions. So um, one of the things that I wanted to speak to, there was a question about kindergarten education on this topic. So what, what I will say is that in kindergarten, the focus really is on character education. Um, in social studies curriculum, we focus a lot on um, how to make friends, how to get along with your friends. What do you do when you have a disagreement with, with a friend? What does it look like to be a good citizen of your classroom? And that's really kind of the foundational work that happens in the kindergarten realm. As far as what are the optional elements and what are the required elements for Holocaust education, the law is, is quite clear that it is offered to all students. Um, normally, if there is a question or a concern in the past, in my experience, it's usually a concern about resources in terms of the graphic nature of some of the atrocities that have happened. And this really is, is a question that's handled really well with the teachers and finding out what the concern is uh, to ensure that the experience is a, is, is a learning experience for, for all students. Um, the other question that I wanted to reiterate is, um, the feasibility of a Holocaust studies coordinator in the district. Um, that person would be myself in collaboration with Dr. Canero. Um, you know, I've collaborated with a lot of community members, with teachers and administrators, and it's a process, you know, that we do think is, is working well. Um, Another question that I wanted to reiterate is, have we considered including second generation people to speak to students? And we actually have not only considered it, we've done it, and we would be happy to do more of it. So we have been working with a lot of community organizations to identify those people and, and schedule, schedule those visits. Um, the English department was definitely included in this presentation. I consulted with um, the English language arts supervisor. I was able to sit in on a lot of lessons um, and, and discuss, you know, how the English department is helping to support this work. Uh, the last bullet in terms of a school sponsored Holocaust program for families, that is definitely an idea that I'll bring forward and we will, we will consider that in our future plans. So thank you for that idea. At this point, I guess I will turn it over to Mrs. McGann to see if we have any other questions. Actually, Ms. Uh, Ms. Brennan, I, I do want to thank you for the presentation. This uh, was a, a perfect opportunity not only to 
showcase the work that's being done uh, in and across our schools, but also through your presentation, clearly uh, exhibiting the expertise that we have leading this effort. So, so thank you for for working with our teachers, working with our administrators, working with our community partners uh, to bring Holocaust education uh, to Westfield schools and to continue to lead the effort to to refine it. Um, I, I have been monitoring the, the Q and A, um, and you have addressed uh, some of these. So I'm I'm really just for the sake of time going to focus on any of the questions that uh, deal with your presentation uh, specifically, and whether you or perhaps I see Dr. Panero. Hello, Dr. Panero, uh, on the uh, the call as well. If you either of you would like to to address them. Um, one of the questions was with regards to no place for hate um, and whether or not there is a, a plan uh, to use no place for hate in the classroom in conjunction with the curriculum, taking what's learned in the class and and giving the students a way to actually be involved in an anti hate movement. Yes, um, that 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 work is already um, that has that that work has begun. Um, that work is ongoing. Um, an example of how that what that looks like in the classroom last year at the middle school at Roosevelt, we worked with the no place for hate committee to develop a number of lessons on microaggressions. And really the idea there was to build capacity for students to understand what a microaggression is um, and how they can respond to it in a constructive way. Um, the No Place for Hate Committee at the high school has been intimately involved in helping us develop uh, our school-wide discussions. Um, last Friday, they had another school-wide discussion on identifying um, social media messages, how we perceive messages and how others perceive messages. And there's another planned school-wide discussion um, coming up at the end of April or beginning of May. So, um, those those the no place for hate committee is 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 definitely a partner in this work. Excellent, thank you. Um, there is another question with regards to uh, the parent programs, but I think you addressed that this would be a, a line of inquiry we could bring back to see how we could extend uh, some of the school sponsored Holocaust programming to our families. Mm -hmm. I, I think the other key point that I'd like to emphasize is really the work that has been described today, hopefully will transfer uh, to the home as students engage uh, with their families and talk to their parents and talk to their siblings about what they're learning. And I think the, the lived experiences that they are learning uh, about and, and hearing directly from uh, will certainly provide uh, plenty of opportunity for discussion at home. And if we're able to bring those programs to our families, certainly that is something we, we would uh, take advantage of. There's also uh, a great question uh, or a couple of questions that talked about the consistency of these experiences across um, our schools. So whether it be at the elementary level um, or at the, uh, the middle school level, um, are there requirements for every class to have culminating learning experiences? And how do you ensure that there is consistency across the classrooms? Mm -hmm. So, as far as the culminating experiences, I, I won't say that there's a, a, a quote unquote requirement. What I will say is many of the students do experience a culminating um, visit, whether it's a survivor or a dramatic performance. I think that's an area that we've identified that we need to work on um, both with our administrators as well as with our teachers. So, building in time to develop common plans. Um, whether it's a grade level or, or a course level at the high school. So, um, you know, in terms of how do we sort of um, get, how do we sort of monitor that and ensure that those things are being implemented? Um, what I will say is that I have the wonderful opportunity of visiting classrooms on a daily basis, and I have seen firsthand the lessons at the fifth grade level, the lessons um, K-4, the lessons in the middle school and the high school, and they are happening. Um, one of the things that I think has been a learning experience for me through this process, as we kind of reflect on 
what our learning goals are for the students and what actually sticks with the students is that I, I, I know that the high school students really respond well to narratives, to memoirs, and they are sort of more desensitized to learning facts, dates, and, and numbers. So that's one area in terms of the 11th grade required course that I will be encouraging my teachers to work together and collaborate to develop lessons around as, as we move forward to take a look at how can we do things better. Uh, let's see what else. Um, there's also a question about whether or not there's a plan to have a Holocaust unit in English language arts in the middle school. Uh, yes, um, well, we, we kind of, I kind of highlighted that that's that interdisciplinary unit that I spoke about. So, um, Mrs. Riley and I are, uh, we actually compared notes. We took a look at the language arts curriculum in 8th grade and the curriculum um, in 8th grade social studies. And we identified a common theme with social justice as well as in social studies. Our theme really is kind of what's the responsibilities of a citizen. So we're going to use that theme to build an interdisciplinary unit. It will be about a two week unit that's taught in January, right before students are selecting their courses for, for ninth grade. So um, I'm not sure what the essential question will be or what the exact focus is, but we're looking at April to bring um, the media specialists as well as eighth grade social studies and language arts teachers together to to write that unit um, and then implement it next year. Still have uh, some time for a few more questions. So one of the uh, other questions that was asked was about how we utilize the teachers that have taken the PD class mm -hmm. uh, from Kane on Holocaust education. Yeah, that's a great question. And um, I'll, I'll spark the speak firsthand. Um, these teachers become leaders and passionate about Holocaust and genocide studies. They are the ones in fifth grade that bring together their colleagues and, and plan a unit and identify resources. In the middle school, um, one of my social studies teachers ran a turnkey training workshop for the entire department on how our Holocaust and genocide studies course aligns with our existing social studies curriculum. Um, at the high school, these teachers are um, supporters of students that feel like they've become victims of a lot of the recent events that have taken place. They are speakers at faculty meetings to educate their colleagues about um, the symbols of hate, the historical um, origins of those symbols, and help them help the teachers build capacity to support the students. So they really become leaders and um, resource people. I think one of the things too that um, we've been talking about as a social studies department at the high school is to identify an ambassador that would be a, a point person that would attend the Kane um, Diversity Council meetings and, and come back and update us on workshops, emerging resources, so things don't, you know, opportunities don't go, go missed. And in a few more minutes, um, can you just touch on um, the concept of age appropriateness, especially when we're dealing with um, our kindergarten through fifth graders. I know you had spoken about it, but can you uh, again just reiterate uh, the sort of line of thinking that goes into how you determine or perhaps how the uh, Department of Education determines uh, what topics to include in a K-5 curriculum, for instance, uh, versus the 6 through 12 curriculum? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, I mean, the guidance in the K-5 area really is on developing the concept of empathy, um, helping students understand what a bully is, uh, how they can respond to an act of bullying when they see one, and to understand and appreciate differences and how differences are not something to be afraid of, but to be welcomed and celebrated. So that really is the focus and, and the guidance um, in the K-5 world. I will agree with you, Dr. Gonzalez, that I think Westfield is exceeding um, 
you know, what we're required to do uh, simply because we're introducing students to more of the historical context in fifth grade. Um, but we're doing it in an age appropriate way through um, through novels, through stories and through lived experiences. So, um, we're not starting to unpack a lot of, um, you know, some of the more upsetting specific facts that we know happened in Holocaust until, you know, seventh, eighth grade um, and in the high school. Excellent. Can I answer your question? I, I believe so. I believe okay. so. And I, and I think it uh, continues to speak of the work that uh, is guided by both the uh, resources that are shared by the Department of Education and the, and the other organizations that you cited, as well as the training of our professionals in determining what is appropriate, age appropriate, and, and what are the uh, best resources. And, and on that note, I think we are uh, at that point where we could uh, thank all of our attendees who, who joined us this evening uh, and who have submitted questions both before and during the presentation. Uh, some of the questions that we didn't get a chance to answer directly were addressed in the, uh, throughout the presentation and others uh, might have just uh, gone off in a, in a different direction that I wanted to make sure uh, allowed us to remain focused on the Holocaust curriculum. But certainly the feedback that we received uh, is valuable for us as we continue to refine our practice. Um, with Dr. Panero leading the effort in working to uh, establish a diversity, equity, inclusion framework, much of the conversation and the lessons learned over the years through the development of our Holocaust education uh, curriculum in Westfield will certainly provide great uh, templates and models for us to, to use as we progress forward. So again, I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. I want to thank uh, Mrs. McGann for her technical skills and in, in uh, coordinating the webinar, uh, Dr. Panero for your leadership in the curriculum instruction efforts, and once again, uh, Ms. Brennan, I do want to personally thank you uh, for a fantastic uh, presentation this evening and for your work working side by side with our administrators, principals, and community partners to bring Holocaust education. Um, to our students. There is work to be done, but we have the right people uh, working together to make it happen. So thank you all. And I wish everyone a great night. A copy of this, um, this recording will be made available once it has been rendered uh, and posted. We will certainly make sure that all attendees uh, uh, have access to the link. And we also look forward to being able to uh, uh, provide a post event survey to our attendees as well to get your feedback on both uh, the presentation this evening and other topics that we can bring to our community as part of our spotlight on education uh, series. So thank you again, everyone. Have a great night and be well. <laughs>